Okay, how do you want to do this? Should I go first or should you? You go first. Are you sure? Yeah, you go. Positive? Go. It's ladies first. Go! Okay, no ladies here, I guess. Hi, this is the Tiger Wolf 55. And this is the Ninja Psychic Wonderloo. Yes, that is my name. Just so all of you know, she's not really a psychic. She just likes that show with James Roday. Who wouldn't? <clears throat> anyway, welcome to this, the first in what we hope is going to be our series, Cinema, Cinema Semantics. Semantics. Yay! <sighs> Are you going to do that every time? No, but see, this is our first. Yeah, you always remember your first. Anyway, uh, what this is is just our way of expressing our opinion about certain films, old and new. As only we can express it. We'll either build the movie up. Or we'll tear it down, wreck it over the coals, cut it down at the knees, give it a pair of cement Mary Janes. Cement Mary Janes? What? Where do you get this stuff? No comment. Okay, we don't have time for this. How this is going to work is we have a spinner, and on the spinner we have eight genres of movies. We're going to use the spinner to select the genre, and from the genre, we're going to select a movie that we would like to review. Okay, shall we spin the spinner? Okay. Okay, and today's selection is musicals. Sweet, I love musicals. Alright, then I'll let you choose which musical we review today. Mmm, Phantom of the Opera. Well, that's a good one. Okay, The Phantom of the Opera, directed by Joel Schumacher. Based off of the award-winning musical play by Andrew Lloyd Webber. Sir Andrew Lloyd Webber. Thank you. The film stars Gerard Butler as the title character, the Phantom of the Opera, mm. and Emmy Russom as Christine Daae, the Phantom's love interest. Wonderloo, would you like to give our audience a brief synopsis about the film? Okay. So it's about this guy, the Phantom of the Opera, he has a deformed face, half of his face is deformed, and so he lives in the basement of an opera house. Well, he hears Christine Daae, upcoming opera singer, he hears her singing, and he decides that he wants to train her. So, through different circumstances, she ends up getting the lead part in the new opera. Unfortunately, he's fallen in love with her, and this causes problems because... In the process of Christine Daae's success, she's also met and rekindled her love with the childhood flame, Rawl. Yuck. Anyway, well, the Phantom, discovering Christine's true feelings, uh, proceeds to try to win back her love by kidnapping her, piling up bodies, and, well, blows up the theater for her. Okay, not really, but you get the idea. He's a deranged psychopath who you feel sorry for. He's a tragic villain, but he is a villain. But he's hot. Okay, I think that at this point we should probably start picking the movie apart. Sounds good to me. My favorite. Okay, let's start with Rao. Okay, what about him? His haircut made him look like a little Dutch boy. I was expecting these little wooden clogs to come out. That's your complaint? His haircut? And he was a wimp? I mean, come on. You know, you would want someone to be strong, exciting, you know, there for you, not... Let me be your shelter while I go to the couch and sleep. No. Okay, granted, his character was played a little drab. I can't remember the actor's name right now. But I think that he did an okay job. Me. All right. I'll admit, in real life, if Christine was given the option of either Raoul or the Phantom, she probably wouldn't have chosen either, because the Phantom is psychotic, and Raoul's a little well, boring. Wish wishy-washy. Not wishy-washy, just a little boring, but he is a good singer. I did enjoy his number with Christine. All I ask of you. Yes. <laughs> okay, on that note of singing... Okay, uh, first we should let our audience know that every character was sung by their actor. Except for one, Minnie Driver, who played La Carlotta, the prima donna of the opera house. But she did such a good job with making it look like she was singing that you would have thought she was. And she did have a, like, mini appearance kind of thing with her voice. She sang for the credits. The uh, song, Learn to be Lonely, 
nominated for best song by the Academy Awards, was sung by Minnie Driver. Very good. See, I know things. Anyway. But anyway, back to the music. Christine Daesh could not sing. What are you talking about? Yes, she could sing. She sang very well for a 16-year-old, but she kind of hurt my head. She gave me a headache during certain points. She had one good song, maybe two. Oh, come on. I like to hear you hit those notes that she sang, especially the final note in the title song, The Phantom of the Opera. I have hit those notes. When? You weren't around. It's not my fault you weren't here to hear my beautiful voice. Oh, so it's like one of those things, if a tree falls down in the middle of the forest and nobody's there to hear it, does it make a sound? And I am that tree, only better. You're a crashing tree. Very good. I said better. <clears throat> well, anyway, I think that she did a very good job. I think that she actually was a perfect Christine Daae. Debatable. No, the person who's debatable was Gerard Butler. What's wrong with Gerard Butler? Well, you mentioned earlier that he was supposed to have a deformed face. Uh-huh. Notice how I said that. Supposed to have. He didn't have a deformed face. Wonderloo, he had a cut. It was a lot more than a cut. And, oh. okay, who's going to pay to see a movie where the lead character is completely deformed? Three words. The Elephant Man. That was different. That was a true story. Maybe so, but I don't think that the Phantom of the Opera would have suffered much if they had actually kept his real deformity. I mean, the Broadway play hasn't seemed to suffer much, and the makeup for that is way more intense. I mean, take a look at this picture. He's supposed to be so butt ugly that his mother wouldn't even approach him to give him a kiss. Yes, but see, Gerard Butler, he showed that with his eyes how could you resist those eyes the eyes were great i think that he was very expressive and he did the character justice see i just don't think that the makeup department did debatable no i'm pretty sure that one's solid eh. okay anything else the art direction the film like i said was directed by joel schumacher who has been uh Criticized for some of his movies. Oh, duh. And he did suffer some criticism for this one as well. Namely the fact that he stuck too faithfully to the musical. He didn't take it anywhere that it hadn't already gone. But the only difference he had was that he had the actors and actresses talk out some of their singing lines. Which sounds really dumb. Well, in his defense, he did make it quite a spectacle. I mean, the opening number alone, the overture, that that was worth the uh, price of admission alone. That's very true. But I think that other numbers, such as Masquerade, it could have been done a little bit better. It looked like My Fair Lady. Uh, minus the colors. Uh, anyway, so we're just about out of time. So, Wonderloo, what's your thoughts? My thoughts is that... It definitely could have been done a lot better. It is worth seeing, but I wouldn't go out of my way to get it. You know, if it's on TV, but I wouldn't really waste my money on it. Well, I wouldn't call it a waste. I think that it was actually a good movie. And if you really want to see The Phantom of the Opera, it is also cheaper than going to the Broadway play. Trust me, it's not going to be much different from actually watching the stage show, except for the experience. The experience is better, though. Maybe so. You get what you pay for, but the movie's pretty good, too. Very true. What are your thoughts? I just gave them. I want to hear them again. We don't have time to hear them again. Okay, so then, people, you're just going to have to rewind. No, oh, that's good. That's good, Ninja. Make them do extra work. Maybe they don't want to. Hmm. Okay, we're out of time. Take care. Thanks for listening to us. Bye. Hope to see you soon.